welcome back to this channel. Olu Ibadan, Olu Bo, Olu Wo, or any other Olu are not kings but mere lords. Let's get into the details. Olu is a short form of Oluwa Lord and they are called Bali in some places. Who is a lord? Lord is an appellation for a person or deity or deity who has authority, control or power over others acting like a master, a chief or a ruler. Every lord are appointed by a king to govern over a number of people or a town or a city. For example, Lord Lugard was the person in control of Nigeria under the name and power of the Queen of England. Every Olu, which means Lord, who are kings today are regarded as king because of civilization and no high-ranking king in Yoruba land bears Olu. Alafi Oni Deji Aleke Awujale Osamewe Ewe are high-ranking kings in Yoruba land and they have many Olus under them to today. They are lesser kings because civilization made them a king, or maybe they overthrow their king and declare themselves a king. Well, I just found out, and everyone just found out that Olu, Olu of Oluo, Olu Ibadan, are just mere lords and they're not kings, and that civilization just made them to appear as as kings and that is why they are lesser kings we see the Olu Ibadan, we see the Olu of Iwo, um, of Iwo and they are saying that all of them are not um, kings they're just lords that Olu means lord in, in Yoruba land and they're mainly meant to be called Bales they are saying that Alafi Oni Deji Alake Awujale Osamewe Ewe are just high-ranking king, high kings in Yoruba land and they have many Olus under them to the day so they are laughing the Oni, the Deji, Alake, Awujale, Osamewe, and Ewe are the kings. And all these Oli Badon, Oluwa of Iwo, Oluwa of Iolugo are just um, mere lords under the kings. That they are under the kings and they are not separate kings themselves. And that Olu is a short form of Oluwa, and they are meant to be called um, Umbales. We all know the Olib of Oluibado and the Oluo of Iwo and Olubo. All these people are just merely lords. They are not kings. The real kings are the Alafi, on, on the Onis, the Alake, the Osamewe, and the A Ewe. So now, this is a, um, uh, an actualization that is coming to most people. And people have expressed their shock over these um, actualizations, these revelation, revelations, rather. Because they are shocked. They do not um, expect these things. But somebody that is, that is well grounded in the Yoruba traditional um, history will know that, will know all these things. But when you're not um, well grounded, we all know that we're in the 21st century. So most people don't have an idea of who all these um, Olu of Iwo had. They just call them kings. They just call them, um, of this Olu of Ibadu and the rest, they just call them kings and all. Nobody calls them lords. And lords are lower, uh, lower people. They are always under the kings. They are under the Alafins, they are under the Onis, and um, so on and so forth. We can recall that the Alafin of Oyo, of Balamidi Adeyemi, passed on on April 22nd, um, 2022. And now there's a, a lot of um, fracas on who will become the next Alafin of Oyo. We have heard that Sheyi Makinde has tipped um, his, own can, his own person that will become the, the next Alafin of, of Oyo. And well, people are, are frowning upon this act because the governor has nothing to do with the Yoruba traditional um, system. He doesn't have a say. So he has no right to pick anybody for, for anyone. It's left for the, your message to determine who they're going to pick. But I've also heard that the, the, uh, his, um, uh, his brother, the later life his brother and three of his sons are fighting for that position. And now... 28 royal families from the Agunloye household have come out to say that it's their turn and that the Alafi of Oyo should be um, um, chosen from their household, that enough is enough and it's high time that they stop being suppressed and if the um, next Alafi is not um, um, chosen from the 28 royal families of the Agunloye household, that they will take it up in court. We can recall that the Oluwa of Iwo has been has been doing nothing things and he has been going against the tradition of the Yoruba system and no wonder is not a king. Now this makes more sense because 
a lot of you have been doing outrageous things. This brings you to the fact to say that if it was somebody that was high, if it was a, a real king, he won't do some things that will hurt his people. We all know that, yes, yeah, some kings are wicked and mean, but at the same time, they try as much as possible to abide by the Yoruba traditional system. But we have noticed the Oluwa of Iwa have been doing things against the, the dictate of the Yoruba traditional um, system. We can recall that he used the camel during the Salah festival, which is contrary to the Yoruba traditional laws. A Yoruba king, an Oba, is meant to, to um, use a white horse. Whether you're an Oba, you're a lord, you're meant to um, sit on a white horse and dress in nice apparels. But he used the camel instead. And people around him, it was, um, it was surrounded by Fulani people. He also urged people to stop using white horses and they should use um, camels instead. This angered the people of Oluwa of Iwo because they are forgiving him at first for taking in a northern wife. They have forgiven that, but he came again to do something outrageous by, uh, uh, um, by doing something like that. Telling them it's not us they should use, they should use a camel. He is trying to change the Yoba traditional system. We can also recall his video on the Oro issue, saying that Oro is not um, Oro is not something that should be done in the night, and that it is a chaotic and it's in the past. That that is what those people think. The fact that this 21st century are trying to change what the forefathers and the ancestors have done in the past. Your back history still remains, and that is why it, it, it's preserved. That is why it's taught in school. In, in government, in secondary school, we are being taught the Yoruba traditional system. We are being taught the Fulani traditional system. We are being taught the Ibo traditional system. That is why it is preserved. So at the end of the day, although they might not go into learn, they give you a, a surface of what the Yoruba traditional system is all about. So him going against it, saying that Oro, it, 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 it can be done in the, in the afternoon, that Oro, women can come and witness Oro, that they can even come and partake in it, which is a taboo. A woman is not meant to be involved while doing Oro. It's a male thing, it's a paternal thing. It's, it's, patri it's a paternal thing, yes. It's meant for the men alone. So you wanted to change the tradition and angry the people of Iwo. And the fact that this Oluwa of Iwo has not learned his lesson at all. He has not learned his lesson at all. This is somebody uh, um, somebody that they, they burnt his house in anger and outrage after he released a video of the, uh, of the Oro um, he talked about. Of them, uh, of them allowing women saying that it's behind their back, they should do anything they want to do. And this is why most of them are not even kings, they're just mere lords, because they carry out anything they, they feel like doing. Well, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe, and turn on your notification button to get more news updates from us as it comes. Thank you.